Hello, I'm Michael Vereno. I was born in Salzburg, Austria in 1986 and I currently live in Grödig, which is a small community just outside of Salzburg. I am a bagpiper. I play different Central European bagpipes and some other instruments. And I work with an ensemble, Ensemble Unisonus, and also as a solo piper and an instructor for bagpipes and for hurdy-gurdy. I think I fell in love with the pipes at a very young age. I uh, remember when my mother was uh, presented with an audio cassette by a French group which uh, had a Cornemuse Berichon and Hurdy-Gurdy on it and I was uh, still in kindergarten back then so I sort of grew up with this sound in, uh, in, in my ears and uh, later as most uh, on the continent do I uh, became acquainted with Scottish piping to a certain degree uh, but I didn't really stay with that. I got my first set of bagpipes uh, for my ninth birthday. It was a Pakistani made uh, set of Great Highland bagpipes. Uh, back then without internet uh, uh, nobody knew it wasn't the best idea to, to get such a set. But I was uh, lucky. I, um, I, I went to Scotland the same year uh, with uh, the aid of the Austrian television. They were doing a show uh, about children with special wishes. I told them I, I had to go to Scotland and uh, they somehow agreed it, <laughs> it would be a good idea. And I met some lovely people there uh, and I got my first set of proper bagpipes the year after. And then after a series of events, I finally ended up with Bohemian style instruments. And yeah, I, uh, I, I took lessons with Rudi Lukhofer, who started uh, the Austrian bagpiping movement uh, in the 1980s. And I stuck with, uh, with this instrument since then. My preferred set is uh, yeah, uh, the Bohemian bagpipe, which uh, is called Bock in German and uh, Dudi in Czech. And I play instruments uh, made by different makers, one by Pavel Cheap and uh, some, uh, some parts of it made by Petr Cheap, by his son, uh, both makers from the Czech Republic. I also play a set which was uh, designed uh, by me and my wife, and it was made by my wife. This is sort of a neo-Renaissance uh, Austrian uh, bagpipe. It's a, a little bit s uh, simpler in design than uh, the uh, uh, Bohemian pipes, but it has a few more musical uh, tricks to offer. And I I'm also very happy to play and yeah, possess this old chap here. This is a set of uh, South Bohemian pipes which was made around 1800 and it's probably one of the oldest playable sets uh, we have uh, maybe on the globe. I am married. I have a wonderful son and a stepson and I'm currently employed here in Salzburg part-time so I have something aside of music. I work for the American Institute of Foreign Study and uh, aside from that I'm currently translating my book on the bagpipes, uh, on uh, the linguistic history of bagpipes. It's, uh, it will be called The Voice of the Wind and it will hopefully come out this summer. If I weren't a bagpiper, I think I'd probably stuck with my other uh, passion, which is linguistics. I 
Um, I already said I wrote a book about the linguistic history of bagpipes and uh, that's what I actually studied. I studied historical linguistics here in Salzburg and uh, if I wouldn't have become a bagpiper and a professional musician, I think I uh, might have stayed at the university for teaching, which I actually did for a short time. When it comes to bags, I actually prefer leather bags. I just like the material more, but I understand uh, the, uh, the use of, um, of Gore-Tex bags and synthetic materials. However, uh, I do play a leather bag, uh, a leather bag on uh, the instrument uh, me and my wife made, but I uh, use a fabric on that, which is traditional Austrian uh, costume. Uh, because I want to have some uh, typical element on the instrument. I actually never oil my chanters. Uh, I only play or mostly play uh, bellows blown instruments, so I don't really need to. But if I have to, I think I do it the same way everyone does. I actually prefer hemp. I use different layers of waxed and uh, unwaxed hemp on uh, my bagpipes. I have some which are corked, but in the end, uh, once the cork is worn down, you have to use hemp anyway, so I actually prefer that. I actually only only use an electronic tuner when I really need to be absolutely sure uh, about the pitch of an instrument. But for internal tuning, I prefer uh, to use my my ears uh, because, especially with Bohemian bagpipes, they they only play in one key, so uh, you have to use pure intervals to get uh, a good sound and that doesn't really work that well with an, uh, with an electronic tuner. Uh, for our bagpipes we mostly use uh, maple wood and maybe also pear wood, apple and plum, so I'm quite uh, used to, uh, to these kinds of wood. But I do have a bagpipe made by my wife, Sonja, which is made of apricot wood. And uh, as far as I remember, it wasn't exactly easy to make, but it's a really, really beautiful instrument. And I very much like uh, the tone of the wood and the color. I don't have a pipe case. I uh, have a soft bag, uh, which um, is really not that spectacular. And whenever I have to uh, transport my instruments over longer distances or maybe uh, take them on the plane, I just put them in a suitcase, uh, preferably together with my clothes so they are tightly packed. And uh, that's actually all I have. And I don't really carry any tools in uh, in this uh, uh, in this suitcase. I do have a toolbox which I take along uh, for reed making, maybe, but only if I uh, can go somewhere by car or by train. So I have some materials with me to repair the instrument, to make uh, makeshift repairs, but I don't really have. Uh, a uh, pipe case. Well, I don't have uh, I don't have tricks uh, and tips would uh, depend very much on the instrument. For uh, Bohemian pipes, uh, the 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 one tip I have is don't overuse wax in the chanter. Uh, this is a, le a lesson I learned from, uh, um, from Josef Rejny, 
uh, who died some years ago, and he was a very, very gifted piper from uh, from the Czech Republic, and he told me uh, to always first try to adjust the whole scale by uh, minor uh, adjustments to the reed, uh, and don't overuse wax because uh, if you use it in more than half of the tone holes of the chanter, uh, it means that probably uh, the whole problem can be solved on an entire different uh, scale. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what, I, uh, what I've taken along. So I, I tend to, um, to put as little wax as possible into uh, the tone holes on the chanter. I actually don't struggle with bagpipes. I think I've made my peace with them by now. So uh, if if you ask me uh, what what bugs me about bagpipes, uh, nothing really. I mean they are very complicated uh, instruments, uh, and they are maybe a bit too complicated given that they don't allow you to play really everything you want. But still, I think that's uh, probably the magic within them and uh, we all can't say we didn't know before. So I think I'm at peace with the, ba with the bagpipe and uh, nothing bugs me. Well, there is one lesson uh, one could take away from my experience uh, and this is a story uh, from the time when I was still in school. I was preparing to play in church for, uh, for a service and I had my uh, Scottish bagpipes on the sofa and I sat on them. I actually sat on the blowpipe just minutes before we uh, would leave and uh, broke it in two cleanly. And this is actually uh, not, it actually wasn't that much of a bad thing because this way I traveled to Vienna to the workshop of Stefan Wiedhelm who makes brilliant uh, rena uh, renaissance style bagpipes and he repaired uh, the set and uh, I literally saw different kinds of bagpipes in his workshop and I got uh, I got so I was so blown away with what I saw later I met Rudolf Lukofer who was uh, the uh, the first guy in Austria uh, to take up uh, traditional piping again. Uh, so, yeah, it everything started with that one day in 1996 when I accidentally sat on the blowpipe of my uh, Scottish instrument. I still don't advise it, but it can yield some good things. I wish all of my colleagues and friends in piping out there good music and good faith in uh, this time. I think uh, none of us find it particularly easy to be uh, a musician, uh, given the current circumstances. And uh, we have a folk tale in Austria about uh, a figure called Augustine, allegedly a piper who uh, survived the plague in the 17th century essentially by piping and um, uh, having a drop. And I'm gonna play you a short version of the tune of Dear Augustine, Odo Lieber Augustine.
Hello, Gonzalo. Let's roll. <laughs>